I just want to give a close-up of the boot cuffs as well as the matching scarf. The scarf has its own separate YouTube video tutorial as well as the matching hat. And then this is how much I have left over of the yarn. This is the Karen Cakes buttercream yarn. This is what's left over of the second cake. And then I have one more, the third cake, that I'm going to make the matching mittens, fingerless mittens with, flip mittens. Here is the other Heavenly Blessing scarf in a different solid color and what it looks like with the Red Heart Soft wine colored yarn and the matching boot cuffs as well as the hat. For the scarf, I needed two skeins and for the boot cuffs, the scarf, and the hat I used a total of three skeins of the Red Heart Soft wine colored yarn and this is what I have left over of the third skein and then I thought it looked Christmassy to add the white trim for the hat as well as for the boot cuffs and I used Baby Mine for that naked color and I'm going to be you're going to be seeing this yarn again I'm going to use this in one of my future video tutorials I'm working on that so you'll see this yarn again for this crochet project you're going to need your F or 4 millimeter crochet hook you're also going to need a pair of scissors and your tapestry needle I have a larger tapestry needle with a larger eye and then I have a skinnier one that will fit through the buttonholes. And then my DMC yarn threader to help get the yarn through the tapestry needle. You don't need to use your tapestry needle to sew your buttons on. I just like to use the yarn to sew my buttons on. But you could use some a sewing needle and some thread if you wanted to. But the two buttons that I chose, one of them was Bell Buttons by Dritz. It's a real coconut, has a really pretty design on it. The other one is by La Mode. The style is 29297 605. This is what the one boot cuff looks like with the one style of button. And then I used a different yarn for the top portion of it. The bottom portion is a Red Heart Soft yarn that matches the scarf. This is the yarn that I used for the top of these boot cuffs. I also made the hat with the same trim on it. It gives it a Christmassy look. For the hat, you're only going to need one skein of the Red Heart Soft yarn. And this is what I have left over of the one skein. The hat with the Karen Cakes yarn is my favorite one. It's the buttercream colored. Here's the hat 
for that one and it's matching scarf. They turned out really beautiful. On video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make the matching boot cuffs. And the yarn that I'm going to be using is the Karen Cakes. Here's some information on the Karen Cake yarn. Here's how much comes in a cake. It's 80% acrylic, 20% wool. Here's more information. And again the color is buttercream. So far I've made the hat, the scarf, and one of the boot cuffs. And this is the, what's left over of the second cake or skein of yarn. The first thing you're going to do is decide what size that you want for your boot cuffs. So this one I made a little bit larger and then this one with the Red Heart Soft Yarn I made a little bit smaller. You can see the size difference. Not much. But the first thing you want to do is just measure around the top part of the calf to see how long or what chain, how long of a chain that you're going to start with. To make a chain, you're going to take your yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook and go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Pull on that loose yarn end and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make your chain. So you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain. I'm just going to show you four of them. Two, three, four. So once you have your measurement, and again, that was the portion around the upper calf of the leg, you just use a tape measure, and I measured about 14 and a half for the size that I want, and then I made a chain that length and my chain length is a chain of 62 and then you can kind of make a circle to see what the opening size will be for your boot cuff starting with the chain of 62 this is the size opening that I have for my boot cuff my boot cuff measures 7 inches across and then from top to bottom it measures 6 inches. So that way you'll have an idea of how wide you want your boot cuff and how long you want your boot cuff. And make sure that your starting chain is a multiple of 2. So an even number. For my red boot cuff or my wine colored boot cuff I started with the chain of 58 and you can see the opening for that boot cuff. Now remember that using a different yarn is going to make a difference in the size as well. So you'll want to keep that in mind as you're making your boot cuff. But this one measures about six and a half inches across. Let me look at this one again. So they're pretty close in size and then the length is the same for both. Now after you finish the size chain that you want for your boot cuff and again mine is a chain of 62 then you're going to hold the last stitch that you made and we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain two and then you're going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So I have two chains right here. I'm holding the third. So I'm going to move down to the fourth chain and then make a double crochet into the fourth chain. So yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook with your crochet hook, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two, two loops remaining, 
yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the remaining two. And then you completed a double crochet. So that first chain three that you made counts as your first double crochet. And then we just made the second double crochet. And you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across. I'm just going to make a couple of them with you. So go ahead, finish making one double crochet in every stitch back across and then come back. This is what my work looks like after I'm done. I have one double crochet in every stitch. Now I'm going to fold it in half. So you're going to want to fold it in half and make sure that you have the right side facing out. So whatever side you decide is prettier and you want to have showing on the outside of your boot cuff, have that on the outside. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, make sure that you don't have it twisted, fold it in half without it being twisted, and then you're going to take and the first chain three that we made and this was confusing for some beginners so I'm going to show you with my tapestry needle. So here on the opposite side you have the bottom chain one, the middle chain two, and then the top stitch of that first chain three that we made. We're going to go right through that top stitch with our crochet hook. So again, you want to make sure that it's not twisted. Make sure your work is not twisted, that you have the right side showing or facing you. And then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go through that top stitch of the first chain three that we made. So you just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you joined your work into a circle. Then you're going to make a chain of one. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a chain one. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle you're going to go to the bottom where you have your loose yarn end. You're going to take and place your tapestry needle onto that loose yarn end. And then we're going to join the bottom. So you take your crochet hook and go through the first chain of that first chain three that we made and join the bottom. So now you have your loop joined or the opening of your boot cuff. Go ahead and tie a knot to join the bottom portion. I'm just going to go through twice. Then you can just leave the loose yarn end for now. We'll bury it later. I'll show you how to bury your loose yarn end. So now you're just going to take, make sure that your work is facing so that the right side is facing you. So I have the right side facing me. I'm going to go into the next stitch over with my crochet hook and I'm going to make a single crochet. So I'm going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the same stitch. So go into that same stitch, bring up a loop, you have two loops on your hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, Go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, four loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all four, and then chain one. 
yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for chain one. And you completed your first Trinity stitch. We're going to make Trinity stitches all the way around. So, so far I made one. I'm going to make a couple with you. I'm going to go into the same stitch where I just finished my Trinity stitch. Bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch. Bring up a loop. Next stitch. Yarn over and go through all four loops. And chain one. Then you can see how you're making your Trinity stitches. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'll make one more with you. So go ahead, finish making your Trinity stitches all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. So now you can see how my work looks. I have these beautiful Trinity stitches going all the way across to the back of the boot cuff. I just finished my last Trinity stitch. Now I'm going to show you how we're going to start working in rounds. So we have to make our last trinity stitch and you want your trinity stitches to line up directly above your previous rows trinity stitch. So to do that you're going to want to make sure that your fourth loop goes through the chain one above your trinity stitch. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So here I just finished my trinity stitch so I'm going to go into that last stitch and bring up my second loop and then I'm going to go into the stitch right before the chain one. So I'm going to go into the stitch that's right above, right before the chain one stitch and I'm going to bring up a loop. So that's my third loop now my fourth loop is going to be up right above the chain one stitch above my trinity stitch. So you can see here's my trinity stitch and the chain one stitch. I'm going to bring up a loop. So now I have my four loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over and go through all four. And then I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to start working in rounds. So to help show you, I'm going to place a yarn marker. Actually, I'm not going to use a yarn marker. I'm going to use my loose yarn end as a marker for the back of the boot cuff. So when I come back around, I'm just going to show you what I've done. So I'm just going to do make one more Trinity stitch with you because I just joined and I'm starting on my next round or my second round of Trinity stitches. So I'm going to go back into that chain one space, the same one, pick, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. Then my fourth loop is going to be right in the chain one space of the previous rows Trinity stitch. So I have four loops on my hook, yarn over and go through all four and then chain one. So you can see how my Trinity stitches are now going to line up one directly over the other. So go ahead, finish making your Trinity stitches all the way around. And when you reach your loose yarn end or the back of your boot cuff, come back and I'll show you what mine looks like. Now this is what mine looks like so far. And my Trinity stitches are lining up perfectly with the previous rose Trinity stitch. I just reached the back of my boot cuff where I have my loose, yen, loose yarn end as a marker. Now I'm going to show you that it's just going to keep working in rounds very easily at this point. So I just finished my last Trinity stitch. Now I'm going to be moving into my third round. So I'm going to go into the same stitch, chain one stitch, bring up a loop, 
go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and then my fourth one will be directly in the chain one space of the previous rows, Trinity stitch. And it will just line up for each round. So now you can just make as many rounds as you want for the length of your boot cuff. So I'm going to show you my other boot cuff. So here you can see my round of double crochet and then I have my first round of Trinity stitches for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I, I made thirteen rounds for mine before I started the second design. So go ahead, make as many rounds as you want for your boot cuff. You can make it the same as mine if you like, and when you come back, I'm going to show you how to make the second design for the top of your boot cuff. I just finished 13 rounds of one Trinity stitch in every all the way around, and now I'm going to show you how to make the top design. You're going to make a single crochet into every stitch around, so you're going to need your yarn marker. I'm just using one of my scraps of yarn as a yarn marker or you can continue to use your loose yarn end at the bottom but I'm just going to use a yarn marker to help keep track of where I am and I'm just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around so one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker and then come back now I'm back to my yarn marker so I can go ahead and remove the yarn marker and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So you go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next two stitches. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. Then make a double crochet into the next stitch, yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, Now we're going to make a treble crochet. You're going to skip the next two stitches and work a, a treble crochet into the third stitch. So you're going to yarn over twice. You're going to skip two stitches and work the treble crochet into the third stitch. So now I have four loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over and go through two of the loops. Three loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. Two loops remaining, yarn over and go through the last two. And you completed a treble crochet. And then you're going to make a treble crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to go back into the first stitch that you skipped and make a treble crochet into that stitch. So you're going to yarn over twice. You're going to go back, go across the two treble crochet with your crochet hook. You're going to go in behind that first skipped stitch, come up through that first skipped stitch with your crochet hook, bring up a loop. Oops. You have four loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two. Three loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. Two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two. So we made a treble crochet into that first skipped stitch. Now you're going to make a treble crochet into that second skipped stitch. So again, yarn over twice. 
go in front of those two treble crochet that you made, go behind the second skipped stitch, bring up a loop, and make your treble crochet. And this is what your cross stitch looks like so far. Now you're going to again skip two stitches and make a treble crochet into the third stitch. And then a treble crochet into the next stitch. And this is what your work looks like so far. Now this time we're not going to go in front of these treble crochet, we're going to go behind them with the treble crochet and then make a treble crochet into the first skipped stitch. So you're going to yarn over twice, you're going to go behind the two treble crochet and you're going to go in front of the skipped stitch. So I'm going to show you that again. I yarned over twice, I'm going behind the two treble crochet. I'm going in front of the skipped first skipped stitch with my crochet hook. I'm going to go through the skipped stitch. I'm going to bring up a loop and then I'm going to make my treble crochet. And then you could see how I went behind instead of in front of like I did on the previous cross stitch. Now I'm going to make a treble crochet behind again into the second skipped stitch. So I'm going to yarn over twice. I'm going to go behind these treble crochet in front of the second skipped stitch. Go through that skipped stitch, bring up a loop, and make my treble crochet. And that is how you create your two cross stitches and it forms like a triangular design. So I'm going to show you this one more time. I'm going to do one more. You're going to repeat this pattern now. So you're going to repeat all the way around the three double crochet and then these two cross stitches. So I'm going to make one more set with you. I'm going to make one double crochet into the next three stitches. Now I'm going to make a treble crochet into the third stitch. I'm going to skip two stitches. I'm going to make a treble crochet into the next stitch. Now I'm going to go back in the front of these treble crochet and make a treble crochet into that first skipped stitch. And now I'm making a treble crochet into the second skipped stitch. Now I'm going to make a treble crochet into the third stitch, skip two stitches, and again a treble crochet into that third stitch. and then a treble crochet into the next stitch. I'm 
And now I'm going to go behind these two treble crochet and make my treble crochet into the first skipped stitch. So I'm going behind, going in front of the first skipped stitch, going through that first skipped stitch and make my treble crochet. Then I'm going to make a treble crochet into the second skipped stitch, going behind those treble crochet in front of the second skipped stitch, go through that second skipped stitch, bring up a loop, and make my treble crochet. And you have the beautiful pattern created around the boot cuff. So go ahead, finish repeating this pattern, three double crochet, one double crochet in each stitch and then your two cross stitches in front of the treble crochet and behind the treble crochet and then come back when you reach the beginning. Then when you're almost to the beginning you can go ahead and just finish making one double crochet in every stitch across Now we're going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first chain three that we created. So I'm going to show you the top stitch. So here is the first chain three that we made for the round. Here is the first chain, the middle chain, and then the top chain or top stitch. You're going to make a slip stitch with your crochet hook into that top stitch of the first chain three that we made. So you just take your crochet hook, go into that top stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook, and then you join that round. So you just finished the one round. Now here is where you could change your yarn if you wanted to add a different yarn for the top round of your boot cuff, but I'm going to keep the same yarn. I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to repeat the previous row design one more time around. So one double crochet into three. That first chain three counts as one double crochet. And you're going to repeat the exact same pattern. One double crochet in three and then your two cross stitches all the way around for one more round. So now I just finished my second round. So I'm going to go ahead and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that we made. I'm going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Now to bury the loose yarn ends, you just take your tapestry needle Put the loose yarn end onto your tapestry needle. Then you just take on the wrong side of the boot cuff. You just take your yarn and just weave it through the inside. And then sometimes I like to come back across And then once you've buried it, you just take your scissors and just cut the loose yarn in. So go ahead, bury all of your loose yarn ends, and then come back. Then you just take your button of choice, and I love this button because I can fit my tapestry needle with my yarn right through the button. But you could use a sewing needle and thread if you wanted to. Then just take your boot cuff, and decide where you would like to place your button. For mine, I put the back of the boot cuff towards the back and then just went between the two cross stitches at the top of the boot cuff. Just placed my button right between and then coming from the wrong side. Let's see if I can, there. Just come through with your tapestry needle and make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn end if you're using your yarn to sew the button on to bury into your work and then just sew your button 
in place. Then you have your matching boot cuffs and each one has its own unique design that matches the blend of different colors. There's a separate video tutorial for the matching hat as well as a separate video tutorial for the matching scarf to go with this gorgeous set.